Um, I love it. And let me uh, have a just a little uh, objective, big picture, uh, maybe a moment of instruction. And here's something to expect. This is a very predictable dynamic that will take place in all of our lives. I'm going to build it on Psalm 23. It says, In the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Plural. Now, probably not too many of us have had livestock and raised livestock, but I have. The years in Wisconsin, uh, we had steers, we had goats, we had a few couple pigs we had a lots of sheep we had rabbits chickens ducks geese guineas and turkeys and anyway so we had a lot of livestock now the point i want to make out of that is they all require a different feed a different nutrition and as in the case of sheep they had a pasture well if the pasture got eaten down meaning the grass then I had to either provide them hay bales, which I did that for some time, or transport them to a new pasture, which I also did that. So that's what God does. He knows we need different nutrition at different times of our life. Think of baby food. Babies are born. All they can handle at first is baby's, uh, mama's milk. But before very long, we're ready for those little Gerber baby food jars, you know. It opens up and then we get the little soft rubber covered spoon so we don't bruise their gums. And we begin feed them the mushy peas. You know, the, the stuff that tastes pretty bland. Because that's all they can handle. But it's perfect for them. Come along a little bit while longer and now we're, we're mashing up our food on our table. And pretty soon they got enough teeth and gums and diet and stomach and GI to handle meat, full, full food. And so the same is true with us as we grow. Now, uh, what I want to say here to us is there's going to be something you're probably going to encounter. And I want to give you a little heads up before you get there. So it doesn't surprise you when you do get there. And that's this. For some of us, at this point in our growth, this meeting, these Hollywood squares, <laughs> are the best thing since sliced bread. It's like, oh, yes, God, this is so cool. How could it get any better? Well, guess what? Your good shepherd led you to a pasture, and he knew it had nutrition just for you. It was perfectly suited. But as we grow then our need for nutrition will change. Uh, we'll still need nutrition, but we'll need a different kind of nutrition. And sometimes then, as we get older, we'll always need some level of nutrition, but here's the big thing that I want to highlight now. For us to continue to grow, we must learn how to give. Intake, yes. Output is going to become necessary. Because here's a little thing that's going to happen. Let me liken it to the eagle, the mama eagle and her eaglets. Now, I don't know if this is uh, an old wives' tale or if it really does happen, but this is a way I think we've heard it is. Mama eagle actually pulls the down out of her body to line the nest for her babies. And then she brings her brings them all the best, choicest, delicate seeds for these little babies. And now they grow up and, man, they're in that nest. And, you know, brother keeps messing with me and keeps pecking at me. And well, I don't have any room to move anymore. And besides, there's all that stuff that comes out the rear bumper. And that's sitting down here in the nest. And, you know, like this is not fun anymore. And besides that, Mama's pulling all the down out. And now the sticks are poking at me. And so now Brother gets up on the edge of the nest and, whoo, there's more fresh air up here. 
Man, his wings get to going a little bit just catching that breeze. But I'm holding on really tight to those sticks, you know, because I don't want to lose my grip. And Mama says, yeah, you're looking good, sonny boy. You're looking good. This is right. This is only right. And I know that when you were jostling down in the nest with brother and sister down there, uh, that wasn't a lot of fun. But that's part of the ingredients that you need to prompt you, motivate you, inspire you for the next season of your life. Well, I say that about us here. And uh, so when I look at us, I mean, my heart truly... <laughs> truly loves you all and I love what God's doing with us big time but I'm also wise enough I've been around this mountain enough times to know that your hearts will at some time come to a place where you know this isn't really satisfying my need anymore and you know what I'm okay with that because if I understand God's bigger picture correctly then I know that he knows you need a different kind of nutrition and he also knows that these Hollywood squares probably are not going to give that to you. So before you feel irritated, frustrated, you know, kind of like, why don't they do this? Back up just a little bit. Say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is one of those dynamics that helps me learn how to fly. And uh, let me add one more thing into this. Jesus said it this way, freely you have received, freely give. Now, if little Junior, all if he continued to nurse at his mama, which in some cultures they do that up to three and four and five years old, but if he was still nursing at 15 and 25, we would say there'd be a dysfunctional problem going on here. Probably a bad case of codependency and who knows whatever else, you know. Well, somewhere along the line, uh, little Junior has got to be weaned, trained to not only eat big boy food, but learn how to be a hunter-gatherer and eventually have his own babies, have his own children who he's going to learn how to fight for, protect, feed, nurture, and so I say that to all of us that as wonderful it is as it is to receive, make sure it's in your wheelhouse of thought, your, your mindset. You know what? I'm, I'm reaching for a time when I'm going to be plowing my own field, when I'm nurturing my own people, when it becomes necessary for me to take care of these people because these people will stand or fall based on my merit. In other words, if I don't do well, they won't, they won't stand. If I do well, they'll prosper. And guess what? We'll continue the process. You watched the little cartoon movie years ago. Um, what was Lion King? Lion King. And the song was The Circle of Life. And it just goes on and on. And that's where we are uh, and that's what we want to have a bigger picture so that, first of all, we don't get irritated at what is, is happening or what I wish would happen. Second of all, we realize, wait a minute, I need to maybe be planning for an exit strategy. Now, I don't mean you have to leave this, but in order to continue the maturation process, we will need to give away what we have received. Great example, we all know it so well, the Dead Sea in Israel only receives and eventually dies. No living thing there. And so uh, we've got to be like Sea of Galilee, fresh water in, water out. Uh, now when I say uh, have a mindset for an exit strategy, I'm not <laughs> encouraging you to be hasty with that. And I also give a little paradigm for that. As much as it's right to leave and cleave mom and dad, we leave mom and uh, leave mom and dad, and we cleave to our bridegroom or bride. And as much as that's right, we never forget mom and dad. Oh, I mean, look at these big old burly football players. You know, it's like, hey, mom, hi, mom, we're number one. I'll be home for Thanksgiving. I hope you got uh, turkey and pumpkin pie. You know. 
We never forget mama. We just don't have to have mama to feed us anymore. Mama is always very important. Debbie says, Debbie has a, a wonderful way of uh, saying that in one phrase. Does the word umbilical cord mean anything to you? <laughs> so we always love mama. You know, the various pastures that we have come through, oh, they'll be very dear to us. Oh, it's like our heart got massaged and nurtured and pressed and challenged and encouraged along the way. And those pastures become very, very important to us. They're huge milestones. And so when we say exit st strategy, we're not saying uh, cut off bridges and cut off relationship. We're just saying moving into the next fresh pasture that Father has for us. I think it has been uh, a, maybe one of the larger components of uh, stagnation uh, and maybe sources of problem in the life of uh, organized religion, Christianity, is that we haven't trained people to expect to move on. We've actually uh, done it the other way. If you're here, you need to put your roots down and stay here. And that's true as long as that's what God's plan is for you. But when he says to move on, then we wouldn't want to stay longer, nor would we want to leave before he says to. And that's where instead of going by dogma, church dogma, we want to learn how to live by, in and from and through the Spirit, and learning how to hear. Yeah, I think we'll, that'll keep us much more healthy in the long run, although it's not quite as um, oh comfy. It's not quite as, uh, oh, what's the word I'm trying to say, uh, sentimental. And because, well, somebody I love is not here as frequently, or there's a new face in a group. I don't know that face, you know. And so it does keep us then uh, uh, having to stay on 10. You know, in other words, we can't just kind of dumb down into kind of our normal routine. Things kind of keep uh, ev uh, evolving, if I can use that word. And I think that is a, a very good dynamic in the life of a uh, believer and certainly in the kingdom. Here, here's a good word for that. That is Isaiah 9-7, uh, I believe. It says, And of the increase of his government and his peace, there shall be no end. In other words, it's not going to get uh, all comfy with us for no more. <laughs> he said, no, this thing's going to increase. It's going to expand. It's going to get larger. That means it encompasses more. So your world just got bigger. Your paradigm, your influence, your friendships, your relationships. So... Uh, Anyway, I think that's built into God's thoughts for us. The Lord is entreating us. He's, he's come on, my little children. Uh, learn how to be secure, not in the numbers of people, not in their accolades. Be secure in me. What do I think about you right now? What's my thought for you? Are you steeped in that, marinated enough that you can be secure if somebody moves on or not be unduly elated when somebody's added to you in either case it tests our hearts one ha one side with insecurity and the other side with pride it tests our hearts where is our anchor and it takes a pretty secure person to uh, have a what i call an open hand policy so that means, uh, Job said it this way, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Well, in, in this case, in this particular application, you see any of us who are influencers, in other words, those who help inspire or nurture or mentor others, we are only, listen to this, under shepherds, under shepherds. In whatever capacity, we're only under shepherds. 
which means he's the great shepherd. And he just said, here, I'll give you temporary uh, influence, temporary time that you can nurture and watch over them. So we got our hand out here like this. And he says, I'm going to give you uh, Pete and I'm going to give you Tim and Jennifer and you watch over them for a little while, but then I'm going to move them on to a new pasture and uh, Uncle Bill over there on the other side of town is going to take him from there. Remember, that's what Paul said. Some of you dung, some of you water, some of you prune, and some of you harvest. <laughs> and so uh, it takes a whole, well, if I could quote Hillary, it takes a village. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, it takes a, a secure person. I, I would say uh, I didn't do very good at that some years ago. Uh, honestly, most of my, uh, for the last 30, almost five years, uh, that's what I've had to live by because I haven't had a formal church or formal following. Uh, some of you guys know Real Wild, Sherry and Paul, and maybe some others uh, know the little ragtag revival center we had in which in uh, rich and center and there was no membership <laughs> it was just whoever the lord brought and if he didn't want them to come then we just had kind of uh, about three families and then sometimes it would be full because he brought a whole bunch more people and we just had to be okay with that okay let me just uh, wrap this up with this thought who are the ones that God is adding to you, to you personally? Who are the ones that God is uh, uh, putting uh, the highlight on? He's highlighting these people. Maybe it's a people group. Maybe it's uh, a, a demographic in a college or a halfway house or a, a prison. Hey, maybe you're going to take this to the prison. You know, who are those people? that demographic, small or large, that God began to highlight to you. Now, let me give you a little plan of attack. The things that you're learning, and I see some of you writing things down. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, write down not only for your own inspiration, but here I give you a little secret what I started doing back in uh, just, just before 2000. Uh, because that's when we got our first computer. So that's 25, six years ago we got our first computer. I realized I could create folders in my computer and put files in those computers. And each folder would have a different topic name, a theme. The grace of God, the mercy of God, the fatherhood of God, uh, heavenly paradigm. You know, and I, and I had folders with those names. And many times I get verses or a conversation or hear a sermon and I would just open up an email or a Word document and I would just throw a few thoughts in there. They didn't have to make sense. Just the address of in the scripture or a couple thoughts. And I say, okay, I'm going to put that in this folder. And then uh, later on, somebody says, you know, five years later, somebody says, can you come and teach on this particular subject? I said, you know, I hadn't really realized it, but the Lord has been instructing me. He's been putting the building blocks together in that, in that subject. And so let me go look. I'll get back with you in a little while and just tell you if it's coming together for me. I go back in that folder. It's like, oh my goodness, it's even more inspiring now. It has more horsepower. It's like, wow, Lord, okay, you were training me and I didn't even know it. So what was I doing? I was training for some time in the future that I hadn't seen yet, but I knew it would come. So uh, some of you are already, uh, you know, solid leaders and already doing it. So this is kind of old hat news. But some of you, it's it's time to be thinking of how am I going to be uh, have a formal or at least an intentional giving away of the gold that God is installing in me. If we as leaders don't encourage people to go, and even worse, if we require them to stay, we're actually hamstringing their growth. We're actually putting a cap or a lid on their ability to grow 
because you know it's it, uh, it's going to be a very 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 few people who need one nutrition through the course of their life you know who are appointed by God to stay in one congregation and, and the reason i believe uh, uh, well per- okay let me say this there may be some who are appointed to come up through one congregation. They're newbies, they're learning, they're growing, they do grow. Finally, the uh, senior pastor is growing, uh, is old enough that he's beginning to want to retire or he passes away. And you know what? Juniors come up and he's able to take the reins. And so he's there and he's nurturing the people, but he's a wise man or a woman. And he knows how now to nurture people and send them out. Nurture people and send them out. So there may be a few who stay in one place their whole life. That would be very unusual because I think most people just, they're not enough, uh, let me say it this way, there are not enough positions, like Sherry said, to activate everybody in the congregation. So it's time to send them out uh, to seek their fortune. <laughs> like the three little pigs with the stick and the knapsack on their on the end of their stick, like, here we go, <laughs> seek our fortune. <laughs> So that was uh, kind of a necessary, I think, house uh, wisdom of the house, maybe. I don't know what to say that was. But just something I think we need to uh, get on the table. So we're reminded uh, not to be offended and to train our minds with some levels of expectation for how God could possibly lead us.